Humans are highly visual creatures, while data, even when it's nicely aggregated, it's often captured in a very structured but not very visual way. As data professionals and data scientists in particular, we need to see how we can convey our data in a more consumable manner, and a dashboard is perfect for that. There are three types of dashboards. The analytical dashboards, which help the user identify patterns or trends. The operational dashboards, to give you a summary of the current state of affairs. Or strategic dashboards, which really monitor certain KPIs. In this video, I'll walk you through on how to create an analytical dashboard using the BI analytics tool Atoti, and you'll see how easy it is to do so. Let's create an analytical dashboard to study patterns and trends in employee attrition based off HR data sourced from Kaggle. A good employee is a valuable resource, and it's important for a company to know what could potentially cause a talented person to leave. So let's go ahead and explore this in a dashboard. By the way, I would like to thank Hetal Kapadia from Atoti for putting this notebook together so that I could provide you with this walkthrough. Let's import Atoti into our Jupyter Notebook and create a session and fix our port so that our dashboard is always available from the same place. And we'll uh, set up a place to store our content metadata so our dashboard is stored for future sessions. We'll do so here. We'll also create a cube from the underlying CSV before we use Atoti to create our dashboard. Now that we have the cube created, we have two choices going forward. We could create all of our visualizations here in our notebook and then just publish them to a dashboard page. Or we could go directly to our dashboarding web app and create all the visuals there. If we want to directly access our dashboard, either to start creating the dashboard or, you know, continue from wherever it was left off, we can do so by running session.link. And that will expose the link right here. As you go into the web app, we can see any previous dashboards that we've created and we can see one that was created earlier by Hital and another one here by me. But let's go ahead and create our own. So uh, we'll click on Create New Dashboard. Since this is HR data related to attrition, it would be nice to have a few visuals summarizing what type of employee data we have, such as you know, for how many departments and what is the gender ratio. So let's visualize this as pie chart since this is the preferred graph type for many business professionals, and we need to cater to our audience. Let me know in the comments below which type of graph is your favorite. Let's choose the pie chart as our data visualization type. Now it doesn't display anything because we have no data in it. So let's select the contributors, gender and department. And we'll just slice it by gender. We'll move the department over into the horizontal subplots. So now we have three plots that we can see here where we could visualize the gender ratio across our three departments. Now, I know, I know some people argue against the use of pie charts, but if it communicates data effectively, use it. Bottom line, know your audience. If the dashboard consumer won't engage with a particular type of chart, or if the chart itself is confusing the data, don't use it. This visualization is trying to demonstrate gender composition. And because we only have two genders in this case, I think it really makes sense to use the pie chart. We see immediately there are more men than women in each department though sales is kind of being the more equal, I guess. For our next visualization, let's look at the employee breakdown by gender across departments. But you know what? Let's create it as a widget. Why? Because we could just use it as a drag and drop in our dashboard, but also make it available for other dashboards that we create. This is particularly helpful if you're working on a project with other colleagues and if you want to replicate the data visualizations you've created. So let's go back to our notebook here in Jupyter Lab. So let's create a stack bar chart for the educational background across departments overall. So I mentioned stack bar, we're gonna choose the stacked bars. We want the contributors count as values. On the Y axis, we're gonna split it by department. And we're gonna stack it by the education field. Perfect. When using bar charts, there are two primary choices for visualizing. Showing the true number of data, like we are seeing it here, or showing how it relates as a proportion to 100%. So for that, we select the 100% stack bars. Well, let's go back to the first example. 
because in here the user can get a sense of the relative size of each department as well as their breakdown. Right? There are more members in the research and development than sales. We can see that life science graduates are really a large component in both sales and research and development. We can also see the number of life science graduates in R&D, research and development. It kind of almost equals the number of people in sales, the total number of people in sales. However, a smaller department like HR can get lost in this. It has such a small piece in here, it's hard to kind of distinguish it all in comparison. And that's why maybe we would want to choose the 100% stack bars as an option. Because in here, the sales, R&D, and HR are all equally in focus. And one can really easily see the educational background for each department, but their relative size in comparison to each other is not available. While a user can derive the same information as in the first example, I think it may require some mental gymnastics. So know your intent. Okay, too many dimensions in one visual may be confusing, but a story spread across too many visuals can also make it harder to piece things together. For this case, I do like to keep it as the stacked bars. And let's convert this to a widget to then add to our dashboard. This is simple enough to do. All we have to do is right click on it and then click publish in app. This now appears in our widgets area for easy access and reusability. All we need to do is drag and drop it into our dashboard. Let's add a third data visualization. We're going to choose the, the job roles by department, which was created before. And we're also going to remove this new pivot table that comes in as a default when you start a new dashboard. Now, the nice thing about having a widget is that we can modify it easy enough. So if we wanted to, we could add another layer in here and put in the, the gender as well. It's a little bit too cluttered though, so we're gonna take it out, but just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to modify the contents here of a widget. And of course, we can change the uh, visualizations type as well. For this particular purpose though, let's revert back into our tree map. And we're gonna remove the gender because that's uh, too much information. Okay, let's call this whole thing employee summary. And we're going to add a new page. Why? Because we want to avoid cluttering a dashboard. A user should be able to get a sense of the information it is trying to convey in, you know, five seconds or less. That quick. So now that we have a sense of the employee demographics, let's start a new page where we can study the data around which employees left and which ones have stayed. Beyond the impact of, you know, obvious factors like job role, travel frequency, salary, and job satisfaction on attrition, what about the more niche or lesser considered reasons for attrition like commute distance or number of previously held positions? Let's create a few more visuals. We'll start by the attrition rates by job titles. This one will be a stacked column. Contributors count. On the x-axis, let's have the job roles. We're gonna stack it by attrition. Perfect, and now let's also um, split it into two by gender. Let's create our second visualization. We'll do a stack bar for this one as well. I'll stack column, rather. Contributors, uh, business travel, and then we're going to stack it by attrition as well. You know, actually for these, it makes more sense for both to show how it relates as a portion of 100%. So we're just going to quickly update our stack columns into 100% stack columns. See how easy it is to make a change. We'll simply display these as KPIs and we want the average distance from home. So let's look for that. We'll now convert these into widgets. And we'll just add them from our widgets section onto our dashboard. Drag and drop. We have to remove that pivot table as I mentioned it 
gets added as a default. We're going to simply remove it. And then we're going to add the attrition based off travel frequency and this new uh, KPIs that we've added in here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, maybe. And you know what? Let's move this into a row format, not a column format. Perfect. It just fits a lot better this way. If you're wondering why I've chosen it this way, you know, just arrange your information like an inverted pyramid with the far reaching or important pieces of information on the top and getting more granular or niche as you go down. Before we go on creating the third page that looks at tenure, please click the like button if you're liking this video so far. All right, on to our third page of the dashboard. Let's look at tenure and start with creating a visualization on the average age versus tenure by job role. Let's choose a scatter plot for this one. We'll get our age and the years in the current role. I think we need to search for this one just to make it easier for me. And we're going to split it by job role, department and gender. Now let's pick department first and then gender. So we can also play with colors uh, used in a visualization. So here we would use colors to help group or classify data. So for example, if we want to see how tenure in each role tracks with overall age, well, we just choose this single color for all the dots. Or we could use colors to distinguish between male versus female, so the gender that we have in here. And we can see if there is any deviation based off a subcategory or maybe based on the department. Now let's remove the gender and add the department instead. Of course, if there are too many colors, the message can get overwhelming and hard to parse. Also, we need to be mindful that some individuals may struggle to distinguish between certain colors due to you know, color blindness or color vision deficiency. So definitely be aware of accessibility issues when using color-based delineations. Okay, let's create a few more data visualizations to add to our dashboard. Well, let's fast forward a bit while we're creating these. Once we have enough visuals to analyze the problem, we can just assemble a dashboard just drag and dropping our widgets that we've created earlier. From there, users can customize the dashboards to further investigate, or we can use this data to train a model and see if we can predict who will leave the company. Though so that's a topic for another notebook and another video. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe as there's at least one new video added each week. Thank you.